Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. Um, today I'm going to show you how to solve some problems and issues when uh, assigning GOT raster values to a LiDAR point cloud. In a previous video, and this video that I'm, you're showing here, you're, I'm showing here to you in my YouTube channel, uh, you can find um, the instructions how to assign the GeoTIFF raster values into a LiDAR point cloud. But I've, I've seen that several people contact me. They have been issues on trying to assign those in information from other GeoTIFFs or rasters into the LiDAR point cloud. So I'm going to try to help you to solve these issues today. So just to start here, we have the same model. Um, the model has been open using the suggested a translation uh, at the very beginning uh, into the coordinates, local coordinates. So that's, that's normal. So when it is there, you can see the scalar field. There are multiple scalar fields, which is number of returns or, for example, classification. Okay, so what we want to know is like now we want to transfer information into this um, um, point cloud. So the first thing you need to know is that the GeoTIFF cannot be an aerial image. I will explain you why. Um, the aerial image usually it, it shows RGBs, they call RGB values, and the RGB values are three channels. So the scalar field usually represents only one information. So if it is intensity, it's one value. If it is um, a return number, is one value. Decimal or integer, it is one value. The RGB has three, three values, so it's three channels. So that's when you're going to find issues. And then I show in, the, in a previous uh, image, in a previous tutorial, um, how to um, transfer the information or create your own visualizations and maps and transfer them. And then is when we found that issue because RGB cannot transfer as a scalar field. Okay. So because of that, we need to stick to geotiffs that has information such as, for example, scabby factor or um, um, temperature, rainfall, wind speed. So it's an, basically a geotiff that has one integer or decimal value uh, in one single band. Okay, so we have opened this. Um, we can use this method of visualization. Then we are going to do this. We're going to open um, a geotiff. In this case, I have here a geotiff created. Um, it was a Skyview factor. So let's go to the cloud compare. Um, no, I'm um, sorry. It's here. It, it was previously in research. Okay. So I have here uh, data uh, for simulation. So it's a Skyview factor. Um, so it is a Skyview factor, okay? As you can see here in the thumbnail, it, this is the Skyview factor. Okay, let's say open it. Now, when we open, we use the last input which corresponds to the coordinates, local coordinates of the model. So we, we, we know that they are overlapping properly or matching. Yes, too. So in this case, the, they was exported, it was imported with no significant distance between that, the, the, the point cloud and the um, GeoTIFF. GeoTIFF was imported as a point cloud. Sometimes it happens that the distance is much farther. So let me do it just for purposes of, of teaching. I'm going to transform and I'm going to put, let's say, 1000. Hmm. Let me see what happened. It moved, but where it is? File, edit, transformation. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to move this farther from each other. So I will apply a transformation. I think 1000 was too much. So I apply a transformation of 500. And it's a inverse translation in the Z. Okay. And so that's how they are. They're 500 meters separate. Okay. So now I want to transfer. You can transfer either the values of a raster, which I mean, like that's what I show in the previous video, or um, point cloud. So we're doing first as a point cloud. Okay. 
So we grab the point cloud that is the origin. We grab the one that wants to be our source. And then we edit, um, of course, we need to choose the scalar field we want to transfer. So it's a scalar field. It is the value number one, okay? So they are far from each other. Um, so check here, it's one band, scalar field, correct. So you choose the band or the scalar field, the active scalar field, and then the, you choose the point cloud that you want to transfer that information. And then we go to edit tool, sorry, um, edit scalar fields and interpolate. So till now it's everything fine. We have the source, we have the destination and we click okay. And then we're gonna use a radius, it can be a five meters, 30 meters, five meters, for example. So it will look at, we'll create a sphere around each point and it will calculate the average or the normal distribution and transfer that value. We'll click okay, this is what we did in the previous, in the previous um, tutorial. And then you get this error, an error occur, see console. And what is saying the clouds are too far from each other, so we cannot proceed. Okay, that is the issue. If this happened to you, because it depends on the on the of the moment of uh, opening the the, the, the geotiff into and transferring into this uh, new coordinate system inside the cloud compare because cloud compare use his own coordinate systems, you will have this issue. So what you have to do to correct this issue is try to bring both as close as possible, both. Um, sources or point clouds okay so imagine this happen you grab the point cloud that is the source and you try to bring it close to bring it or move you have to use a translate um, transformation or translation so you go to edit and apply transformation and the transformation is like you're going to do a translation in the z direction in the in the vertical direction of 100 meters and bring it closer so now oh Made a mistake. Well, sorry. So now there are 500 meters. I need to do. I need to do the translation. I was doing the inverse, so it was farther. Okay. Uh, oh, I selected the wrong one. So you need to be careful with that. Not to. Not to. Okay, I'm closing again, control T, again, control T. Okay, they are much closer, but it's still too far. So what I'm gonna do is the sky view factor. This is the original point as I don't apply it in first and then bring it as closer as possible, 500 meters. Let's see what happens. Now they are much closer, okay? So now let's see if we can do the proper translation, I think, may work. If not, let's bring it even much closer. So what we're gonna do is gonna bring it 50 meters closer. They're almost overlapping, okay? Or very close to each other. Maybe too close. So, or maybe it was too much. So maybe it was 25 meters enough. So apply the inverse. So it will be that much, they're very close to each other. So now we choose the sky view factor, which is the origin. The, the the source and destination edit scalar fields interpolate our source is the, at the bottom our destination on the top click OK the radius and then we go and click OK now it's working properly and transfer all the information now we click the the source and then we go to the scalar field and then we need to choose the scalar field band one and sorry. And now we need to use. Oh, it didn't transfer properly there. It only transferred a couple of values. Okay, so you see, they only transfer very, very little amount of values on here. So what we need to do is maybe redo it again. And we need to transfer Control T. Uh, another 25 on top. Put it on top and then do it again. Edit scalar fields, interpolate. And then what happened is that put OK, the, the sources on the top, 
destination of the bottle, okay? And increase the radius. That's what's the problem because the radius is too small. So let's put 30 meters because it will look at the, it will create a sphere, a hypothetical sphere of 30 meters and create a normal distribution of that. So now it's taking longer because it's calculating for each of the points that this uh, sphere has been uh, hypothetically created. So it will take a while. It's relatively fast. If you use nearest neighbor, it's much precise, but it takes longer. And you need to leave it there, the computer, go and make a sandwich, something like that, and then come back. Now we turn off, and then we have all the values properly translated. As you can see, everything depends on the on the on the settings that, that you use. So as you can see now, didn't do it for the roofs because it was beyond that th those 30 meters. Anyway, we don't need thermal comfort on the roofs. So this is something that you need to bear in mind is first when you use the when you use the uh, when you apply this scalar field and interpolate from another entity, you need to be sure how far the entities are from each other. And once you do that and you want to transfer information to this point, you need to estimate the radius you want to grab that information from the other entity. If the entity is 100 meters apart, your radius should be more than 100 meters in order to catch it. Make sense? If, you're, if you put a radius of 3 meters and your entity is 10 meters away, it's not going to grab that information from the other entity. But that's how it basically is working. So here we have the sky view factor transferred into, the, into this point cloud. Um, the, the name is band number one because that's how we that's how is the name they, they put it and then you can see here the distribution of the scabby factors. Um, you can use other color to high contrast, for example, or to describe them. Scabby factors work very well with um, with gray. Okay, so this is basically how we solve that problem. Now another problem is that some people. In the other previous video um, I, I did, it shows that when you want to transfer RGB colors using the same method, it doesn't work. And I will explain you why. Let's open an RGB map for this, okay? Any map that you we may have there. So let's go. This is a map. So let's open it. You can choose here to import it as a point cloud or as a texture. Let's export it as a point cloud because anyway you can transform your point cloud as a mesh and say yes. Okay, so you see here it was imported. I think it's not properly imported because it doesn't have the geo reference. So let's let's grab an image that has geo, its geo reference. Okay, so again, let's do. This is not geo reference, so maybe what we need to have is um, uh, grab one that is geo reference. So let me grab one. No. Um, so here I have another TIFF, geo TIFF, which is a plan with this information. Okay, okay. So then we go last input, say yes to all. So you notice this transfer here. Um, here the value is has been transferred. Oh, it has a scalar field in fact. I don't know why. Let's see. This geotip is should be uh, an image. So let's see what's going on. Here we have the image. This is the image. Okay. So properties. Oh, sorry. So it's just multiband color. So I don't know what what's going on here. Importation is very funny, but anyway, let's do it again. Just to double check. Geotif. This is the correct one. Mm. Properties. Yeah. Is the is the correct one? So we go there. I'll put okay. Let's see if we just do all. 
some reason it's, it's bringing this in, in a very weird color. So what I wanted to explain here is like if you have RGB color um, as an image and you want to transfer that into, into the cloud, you cannot do it because the, the color is an RGB, it's not a scalar field. As, as so, you cannot transfer this, the RGB, which is in three bands, into a scalar field that is only one information in one band. So that was the, the that's why it failed in the previous um, information of how to transfer maps into into scalar field into um, point clouds. So there are there are these are the options I want to show today. Um, so if you have, let's go closer. If you have a GeoTIFF. Uh, with a single band information, it works. Um, the best is, the best you can do is to uh, bring them close to each other, and once you select them, you do the proper. Um, again, I'm just showing this quickly. Pick uh, the uh, different interpolation values. So, for example, you can increase it to. Or 40 or 50 your radius. So in that way, you will have the opportunity to capture these points here. Will capture the information on here. Okay. So that's all, and I hope this uh, video tutorial helps you to solve these issues and and clarify things better in future for you. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye bye.